G'day folks, welcome back to the channel for part 2 of our Dual Wield Acid Dervish playthrough. Where this time we're actually going to take a quick detour before we drop into the prison cellar. I've just reset my client and we are going to go and play with uh, Pasquil the Hoarder in that little hole in the ground because uh, his weapon is actually really really good and I want one. So we're going to go get it. Or at least we're going to kill him again and try and get it. One of the wonderful things about it being a monster infrequent is that the I in MI means that uh, he may not drop it. So we're just going to get some attention here and see if we can't kill all of these before we have to deal with Pasquil himself. I did also see there is an elite monster down there. I didn't see what kind, but... Uh, Void touched. Okay, so that's, I believe, chaos. Okay. We should just be able to hold left click and delete him. Shouldn't be an issue. Rav, interesting name. If we can get our hands on Pasquil's tail, our damage will go up significantly. In fact, if you are playing along and you're up for doing it, I would recommend killing him until you have two of them. Um, it, it really is that good. You'll see if it drops. Um, you'll see what I mean. So again, just keeping an eye on my health. I think I may be standing in the goop in the river, so going to get out of that. The big damage he does is when he swings his tail at you. Those two little darts do a lot of damage. And I haven't been using Shadow Strike like I should. And it is actually draining my um, energy to do this. Okay, Vampiric means lifesteal, which I like. This is the MI for Pasquil. It's his tail, and as you can see there, 1,000 poison damage over 5 seconds to Belgothian shield, uh, shears, and convert 100% of poison and piercing damage to acid damage, which is really nice. Um, that is a huge damage increase. Even though it doesn't look like it is, um, that amount of flat poison damage added onto this proc means anytime this goes off, uh, whoever it triggers on is really going to feel it. Um, I'm still going to skip uh, totems for the moment. Okay. Now we're going to go help uh, Barnabas with the water. If I can click on the trapdoor. Okay, keep putting points in physique as well. So a thousand damage over five seconds is a pretty big deal. It might even be worth uh, resetting after this and getting another one of those. It's a really, really good weapon. Oh, got the Shears is three targets as well, so... That's going to spread that poison very nicely. I, th I suspect, although I haven't checked, that uh, putting more points into Belgothian Shears will um, increase the damage a lot. Or increase the maximum targets, I should say. Since that's what I was thinking about at the time. <laughs> These guys are going to hurt. These ones specifically always hurt. Uh, we have picked up a lot of health from somewhere as well, which is nice. But I think the major component of us being a fair bit tankier is actually that armor. So the armor from Phantasmal Armor is pretty good. Uh, what else we got? Uh, plus three to this as well from, from that weapon. It's quite nice. Let's just put it all into bar and another point in armor. 
Armor is one of those things that it's never bad to have more of. So if in trouble or in doubt, take your points and put them in armor. You can play this as a tank once you have the gear, once you have the lifesteal. Um, you can also play it as, you know, kind of hit and run, shadow strike in, use Amarastas, run away, repeat. Still not doing a huge amount of damage without the procs. That will change, that will change. I remember the first time I played this character, um, or this particular build anyway, it felt super squishy at the start. I think I died maybe three or four times, had to remake the character. Finally got into the Forgotten Gods area, killed Ganavakad the first time. He dropped his weapon for me, which was really nice. Ran into one of the dungeons feeling all high and mighty because I just got this really awesome weapon and just got deleted. Um, one of the bosses in the dungeon I'm thinking of, I can't remember which one it's called, but the boss has a cold shotgun, so I like shadow striked right into his face and ate the entire thing, died in one hit, or it's probably like six or seven hits all at one time. It's pretty funny to me now, but at the time I was quite mad. I'd been playing that for about three or four hours by that point. It was just starting to feel strong, and then boom, dead. So Veloth hopefully will drop his or her ring. Uh, it's an MI with a bunch of poison damage on it. I definitely would like it. Because like I was saying, our, our damage is quite anemic. Well, having said that, I've been playing pet builds lately and they tend to be very strong early on. Whereas the... Uh, the auto attackers and such tend to take a while to get enough skill points and procs to kind of make them feel good. Alright, we did get the ring. Unfortunately, Inquisitors of Thunder is, um, uh, it's bad. <laughs> but that's fine. Flat acid damage, percent acid damage, some stats, and a little bit of aether resist. Pretty decent. Okay, and we get a Rune Shrine for another Devotion Point, which will go straight into the Ghoul for attack damage converted to health. Now, at this point, um, I'm probably going to take the proc on Ghoulish Hunter and then finish the um, Constellation, then probably start on the Jackal. You could skip the Jackal and go after, for example, Acheron Scorpion, this uh, scorpion sting basically shoots poison out from every direction when it triggers. You could also go for the Eye of the Guardian, which will give you, um, if you've ever used Dreg's Evil Eye, this will summon one of those and it'll orbit around you. It'll like go through enemies, do a ton of poison damage. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, either of those is a good option. Let's get our bag upgrade. There we go. Inventory expanded. Now I'm going to reset again because I want another one of these uh, tails. So um, hopefully it's actually going to drop. Because having two of them would be very nice. And then I think you probably won't replace those until um, mid to late 20s when we kill uh, Ganavaka. These guys also, the Rift Scourges, can drop. Um, it's basically one of their legs as a weapon. It's the Rift Scourge Claw. That's um, decent, I would say, as well. Um, but this one is really good. Really helps out on bosses as well, because you're attacking them long enough that the uh, the proc will trigger, and they'll just get a dump of poison, uh, a huge amount of poison just dumped on their heads. You get to watch them melt. It's good fun. Just do be aware that you are still quite squishy. 
Um, does Belgothians have weapon damage on it? It does, so you can lifesteal with that. This is added on top, so that doesn't matter. We've actually only got the one proc here. Next level, I'm going to get Amarasta's Quick Cut, which will give us another proc, which will be good. Let's see if we can just get him. Looking good, looking good. Yep, here he comes. Let's not get hit by those darts. All right, and now we kill him. You can see he's dying a lot quicker this time. Um, that is going to be the poison damage from his tail. It's like that scene out of Wayne's World. I had to beat him to death with his own tail. I wonder how many people will remember that movie. It's probably not many of you. Okay, didn't drop it. Um, I'm just going to do it again until he does. I may... Um, if he doesn't drop it this time, I'll cut the recording and come back when he does. Um, I know watching someone farm one monster over and over is not really that entertaining. Okay, no Rift Claw Slices, unfortunately. I'm surprised that the cave has been here every single time, because there's, I think... There's at least one other place up here where it can spawn. I'm definitely glad it keeps spawning here, though. Don't really want to run across the entire zone to find it. Okay. Don't really want to fight the Elite and also Pasquale at the same time. So let's see if we can just... yep. Make this guy mad, make him run over here, and we'll beat him down. Okay, first things first, get out of the poison. Second, kill his friends. And third... Kill Pusquil. See if we can get him out of that river. There we go. Okay, he did drop it this time, and we've got a defensive proc on it, which is not bad. So that's good. I'm glad I don't have to um There we go. Don't have to cut the video. And uh we can just continue on with the playthrough. Speaking of which, where are we up to? Meet Bourbon in the prison. I think we've done that. I think it's time to go and rescue our blacksmith. So Duncan is down here. Duncan is one of your potential blacksmiths. Uh, if you are playing a ranged build, take Duncan. No questions asked. He has a um, pistol recipe that Angrim does not have. It is definitely worth taking him for that. Um, if you're playing any other build, I would say it's probably still better to take Duncan because... Uh, choosing his side actually gives you more XP. Um, what else do we put? One point in Shadow Dance? What does this give us? Chance to avoid attacks and defensive ability. Yeah, we'll, we'll chuck a point in there. Sure, why not? Um, as I said, I'm kind of loosely following a bunch of different guides who have, you know, shown... Well, laid out one potential way of doing this, um, but there is no actual guide this time. I'm just winging it. If there's anything super obvious that I've missed, uh, yell at me in the comments, because uh, it's always good to have a, another set of eyes looking at your build, tell you what you're doing wrong. Oftentimes there's something super obvious that um, someone else will see that you won't. 
All right, that's just a savage totem. Um, having said that, I'm going to leave, I think I'm going to leave totems until Act 2, or maybe until after we've got the weapon. Um, I am going to take the side of Duncan, um, side with Duncan. And, uh, because I want the XP. 800 XP is, like, fifth of the level. It's, it's a decent chunk. I think for, um... Siding with Angram, it's considerably less. And there are so many blacksmiths in the game that if you um, if you happen to really like, or you, you don't need the uh, extra cross from Duncan, there are other blacksmiths you can use anyway. Each one, I th I'm pretty sure all of them have their own sort of added stat they'll put on crafted gear for you, but um, we're not really going to craft a huge amount of gear anyway. I'm pretty sure relics don't get that. Okay, so just up here you can see the cave entrance. That's the way we're going to have to go in. I do prefer to go in the uh, the entrance that's sort of just here. Because that way you don't have to fight quite as much rubbish to get to the Devotion Shrine. Um, or potentially run past it and risk it chasing you. Let's see if they've also blocked the quick and easy route through the middle. So this is a pathway here. Will it have a rock in it? No, lucked out this time. So sometimes there's a rock there and you have to go all the way around the bottom. This worked out decently. All right, uh, devotion point. And uh, I guess we put it in pneumatic burst because it's kind of permanent and it's the only option I have at the moment. So if we get low, we'll get ridiculous amounts of life steal now. And hopefully that'll give us enough time to run away from whatever got us low in the first place. Probably put that on, um, uh, what's it's called? Veil of Shadow. I wanted to say Night's Chill, but I think that's, yeah, that's the modifier on it. Okay, so two things left in this particular area that we're going to do. One is to rescue the cook. Um, I think his name is Algrim Seagull. Um, they never tell you his last name, but I'm pretty sure it's Seagull. Um, tell him about the prison, send him to Devil's Crossing. And the other thing we need to do is get to the village and clear the rift gate, um, followed by backtracking for the uh, the two zombies, Balros and Hagra. They're like over here on the map somewhere. That's a lot of stuff. Nice little explosions. Okay. So we clear the rift gate and uh, then we'll backtrack. And definitely don't be afraid to run away if you need to. It's not worth dying. Okay. Alright. I think that's everything that's chasing me. Let's get the next wave. We definitely need to put a few more points into Amarasta's Quick Cut. Or, uh, Blade Burst, rather. Or maybe consider getting uh, Righteous Fervor. Alright, here comes the last wave. Fortunately, only the two. Still got one of them. One of them doing cold damage, which is not ideal. This is also not ideal. You can go away. Looks like our passive regen and lifesteal is enough to kind of... Ignore the damage from these guys for the moment. See how long that lasts. Okay, so we've unlocked the rift. I'm going to come up here and uh, grab this here bookie. The cultist orders gives us another quest um, back in the prison. There's someone we can now go talk to. 
What triggers that uh, Earth Ward, by the way? Just when hit, get some regen, increase your armor. That's pretty good. I definitely like that. Okay, backtracking to kill the other two zombies. Um, I'm going to cut into... Okay, I was going to go through here, but that's not happening. Hopefully the main road isn't blocked. It usually is. Nope, looks good. Okay, we kill off the crystals because they spawn enemies. And then we kill off... Where is he? I saw that. Where's the shaman? Somewhere around here there's a shaman who's healing stuff. There he is. Oh, and he had a, a friend. A witch doctor. Okay, so level 14. Let's go ahead and get... Some points in lethal assault would be alright. Uh, more points in Shadow Dance is also good. More points in Phantasmal Armor, also good. Taking Veil of Shadow and Night's Chill, very, very nice. So this one will actually do damage to things around you. It does cold damage and reduces their resistances. Let's just get rid of a few of these. Um... Really is hard. There's a lot of skills at low levels that are, are definitely good to get. We could put more points into Nadala's Head and Hand, get more procs. We could put points into Belgothian Shears or a Quick Cut to increase the proc chance. Um, that's probably... What can we get it to? 19% with 3 points. That's a lot of armor. I think... Maybe we get Night's Chill though. Or um, Veil of Shadow. I'm going to put that over here. Turn it on. Now everything around us will be slowed down and uh, take cold damage. The damage they take is not going to be amazing at this point. We're actually taking a beating from these guys, so use a potion. Okay, with just one left, we should be fine. I should have killed this guy first, he's uh, the cold one who's slowing me down. I definitely should have killed him first. Also, using uh, Amarastus Quick Cut constantly, or not Quick Cut, the uh, Blade Burst, is uh, draining my energy faster than it's regenerating. So we'll have to do something about that at some point as well. Okay. So that's that quest done. And, uh... I think we go back to town. We're going to end up going back to the, uh, the Burrich village, but we can talk to a bunch of people first. There we go. Sell all of this stuff. Alright, and we're almost 15, which is a uh, important level because it lets you use um, components, lets you craft some basic components, which are definitely worth taking. Um, similar to these, I, I really want to use that, that 24 flat region would be really nice. This is also would be very nice. <laughs> What's that crit chance? Zero. We actually have a decent chance to miss, that's unfortunate. Um, spirit, percent health. I think we'll just take that for now. 
Where's our uh, hit chance now? A little bit better. Okay, so this is the guy we found a note has his name in it. You can kill him, um, in which case you will get a rare crafting component, or you can let him go and he'll give you a key. Um, I'm just going to kill him. Well, I hope I'm going to kill him. He might be killing me. Let's not stand in the fire. Okay. Here is Duncan. That's our blacksmith. Here is Olgrim, our Steven Seagal stand-in, who we can hear lots of stories about later. We just got friendly with Devil's Crossing, so we can buy these if we want. Um, they're okay. The Slith Blood Tincture would be okay, but they are quite expensive at this point in the game, so I'm not gonna not gonna use them. Okay, here is a thousand iron and a blood of Cthon. And there is our quest to kill the warden. Okay. Um Yep, I think we're up to date. Let's go find us a bunch of fabric on the docks. All right. So we're heading up here. Um, I probably should have just walked straight up instead of going through the houses, but it doesn't make a big deal, or a big difference rather. In over here, there's another cave. Um, there is a Pusquil 2.0 in there. Uh, his weapon is not as good, um, so I'm not really going to bother doing it. But in there, you'll also find a one-shot chest, which will give you a guaranteed blue item. Um, be aware that when you walk in there, the entire place is going to come charging straight at you. So have a plan, or be prepared to restart your character. It's a lot of things attacking you, and they do a lot of damage. So just be ready to fight. Um, we are here for fabric, of which there will be three. They will be in boxes in certain places. Um, I haven't found one yet, which is surprising. Probably all going to be over here. Potentially be one over there. Nope. Just going to pick off a few of these zombies. So this should be one here. There's one fabric. Second one here. There's a few different places these can spawn. Every time I try and find them, I'm always like... It's always weathered chests. See, look, this is a weathered chest, and I open it, and it's not in there. So, it is true that they are always in weathered chests. It is not true that every weathered chest will have one, though. This will have the third one. So, there are set locations where they can be. Right, so we've got three. That's all we needed. Let's get out of here. There is another... Um... Another Devotion Shrine just up here, as well as the Apprentice to Rescue, and then we're into the uh, the Warden's quarters, or his uh, mansion, I guess. We're starting to take a decent amount of damage. Haven't seen the Ghoul Trigger yet, uh, actually. Let's go ahead and put that onto Veil of Shadow just so it's always up, even if I forget to use um, Pneumatic Burst, which will happen. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just a guy. I'm not some god of gaming or anything like that. I'm going to forget to do stuff. Okay, level 15. Nothing changes. <laughs> uh... I think we just put points into Knight's Chill at this point. Let's 
So this is the cold damage they take just for standing near us. It's decent. Um, the lower level you are, the more sort of relevant it is. So maxing that early is a good way to increase your damage. Okay, Berserker's Cal could be good. If we can kill all this rubbish that's attacking us, that would also be good. Okay, we got a Devotion Point. We'll finish off the Ghoul, uh, which will let us take this point back and put it into here. 6% energy versus 5% health. I don't think I'm going to bother for now. I'll just leave it. It's not a big deal. And uh, the health, I think, is more relevant. It is definitely time to not be there. This guy's frozen, slowing us down. But you can see what I mean about how this is a very squishy build. On the Archon, we would have walked in there and just murdered it, and it wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been a problem. This character will get to that point, um, but we are definitely not there yet. Okay. Let's go say hello to the Warden. Gonna skip a lot of this. Um, there's no real need to kill everything. Though it is fun. <laughs> the one downside to having the uh, the cold aura is you can't really sneak past anything anymore. You go into a place and that aura hits anything at all, and now everybody wants to eat your face. I think we should be able to stand in this doorway and kill stuff as it comes through. Just keeping a very close eye on my health. Abner the Forsaken one. Notice my skills are all looping. That's going to be um, Abner there. It's probably I'm standing in something that's doing that. Um, he's almost dead. We can probably finish him off. Yeah, there he goes. Tainted Brain Matter, that's a pretty good drop. I think that lets us craft relics. Um, although I don't think we can wear one yet. I am going to go check because that would be a very big boost right now. And definitely be worth having. Um, Berserker's Cal. is interesting, but that minus 25% physical resist and minus 25% Ellie resist, mm. Mm. Is that an activatable skill? It is. Okay, we just don't activate that, and we use that for stats. Um, that weapon in the offhand says it's 17 damage per second more, but that would be losing almost a thousand and a half poison damage on Belgothian Shears, so no, we will not be using that. Okay, um, the relic I actually want is this one, Gluttony. So this gives 2% attack damage converted to health. I actually had thought it was 4, but apparently it's 2. And the Breath of Death proc that also does a decent amount of vitality damage and then converts a lot of that to health. We'll be using that early on, uh, but for now, fizz damage, fire damage, offensive ability, and a damage proc versus good old equilibrium, good for everything, not great at anything, or ruination, which I think we just go with equilibrium and uh, keep that until we can use it. So if you can't craft one of those, if you don't get a Tainted Brain Matter, um, you will get one from the Warden, which will let you make a relic after you kill him. Um, I can't remember if it drops from him or from his chest, but you will get one when you kill him. All right, we're gonna move through here relatively quickly. Um, 
Having said that, we are a little bit low level, so it might be worth doing a little bit of farming. We'll see how we go. If we're killing the Warden around 17, that's fine. Alright, trip through the Warden's cellar. Um, again, we are skipping any totems that I may find because, uh, quite frankly, I'm scared. Um, I'm pretty sure a totem is just going to eat my lunch at this point in the game, so I'm not going to mess with them. Uh, if you want to try them, please do, and then l let me know how horribly you died or uh, how easy it was. Uh, but for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna wuss out. I do enjoy clearing totems because they have um, good drops, or uh, at least potentially good drops. But um, I also enjoy keeping my character alive. And like I said, I'm scared. <laughs> All right, we're into the next area. So this is the area with the dreaded. Ancient Aether Warp Totem. Um, I don't recommend anyone try this with this character in normal. Um, wait till Elite. By then you'll have gear and uh, you'll be much better equipped to deal with it. Hopefully we can kill, excuse me, a few of these and uh, if they drop a rift claw, uh, rift claw slicer, I would be quite happy. I would be also fairly surprised. Um, I don't know why, but they they don't seem to drop them very often. I usually get maybe one, maybe one, for each time I run through this area. If you can get one though, that's, that's uh, definitely a good thing. All right, there's. Some gloves for us, which actually look like they'd be pretty good. More armor, some flat piercing damage, bunch of cunning, bunch of skills for us. Yep, put those on for sure. And uh, level 16. I'm not too worried about taking the bar further than this. Um, I think for now, we take this. I'm considering respecking. Um, and taking Oathkeeper for the um, the RF, the, the default attack replacer. It's probably a good idea, a good thing to do. Ah, he's reborn. Of course he gets a full heal. <laughs> Okay, these guys are dying decently quickly, though. I don't know what happened, but we went from feeling like I'm doing nothing for damage to actually feeling okay. Definitely still squishy, though. Having said that, that was a lot of stuff beating on me, so I'm okay with being squishy in that situation. can see the uh, cold damage aura is definitely putting in work for us. It's probably the majority of our damage in that fight came from that aura. Um, Night's Chill, definitely worth the points. If we get to 17 before, uh, before the Warden, I think I'm going to max that out. And then maybe put another point into one of the procs, perhaps. Or, um, or into a pneumatic burst. Okay. It doesn't look like we're going to get a Rift Claw Slicer. I think there's maybe one more place where we could um, encounter them without going out of our way to get it. And uh, I'm definitely not going out of my way to get it.
Okay, and the damage is ramping up. Um, I'm actually... I have no idea why. Um, I think maybe the uh, resistance shred on this is helping. We do a lot of poison and acid damage, and uh, increasing that by 20% is pretty good. Um, right, we're going to go into the jackal now. Um, and I'm going to go back to town and take that point out of the percent health because I want the, I think it's total speed on this one. Yeah, 6% total speed, so that's going to be move speed and attack speed for us. And uh, if we were casting spells, which this might actually be a spell. Anyway, if we're casting spells, it will also apply spell speed. Um, right, so we're going to pay a an Aether Crystal to get that one done. And we're going to put it into the Jackal. And we'll max out the Jackal with uh, the next one. So, Constance here, uh, what do you need? Is this enough? Yes, it is. We'll give us a really nice chest piece, which we can't wear yet. So we'll just put that aside. So level 18, level 20. Got some upgrades waiting for us. And actually, at this point, I'm going to get some components. You could wear a lot of the early components from level 15. Anti-Venom Salve goes on your belt. and if you have enough stuff to make resilient platings and then into um, silk swatches, it is definitely worth getting two of those as well. What am I short on? I don't have enough iron bits. That's funny. <laughs> uh, where's my silk swatch? There it is, on the shoulders. And if I had enough iron bits, I would put another one on the pants. I may be able to get enough. Let's see, I don't think I have anything else that's actually worth selling. I could sell the resilient plating, but it kind of defeats the purpose. No, I think that'll do. These mutagenic echoes, you could put one of each of these on your weapons. Um, I'm kind of saving them for the moment because I want to do. Um, where are they? Vitriolic Goldstones, and they need four each. They also need a lot of money. Um, these are for level 20, and they are a very large amount of damage. But uh, they will use four each. Um, I would be surprised if anyone has eight of those by the time we make them. But uh, one is definitely better than zero. Okay, um, you know what? We're going to do a little bit longer of an episode, and I'm going to go kill the Warden. Uh, level 16 should be enough. And we'll probably be level 17, maybe even level 18, before we fight and or kill the Warden. Still no MI from them. That's unfortunate. Okay. We can skip a lot of these with um, Shadow Strike, and uh, I definitely recommend doing that. You can save a lot of time by skipping trash, basically, with Shadow Strike. So we come in here, pop this, grab that, and then we're out. With uh, Shadow Strike, doorways are not blocked. No matter how blocked they may look, you can just dash past them to another target. And uh, you can do huge dashes. Um, I forget what it's called, but there's a way you can start a start a uh, shadow strike and then use a rift to go somewhere else, and you will basically dash from where you rifted to to your original target if you do it right. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but um, there's some crazy videos out there on YouTube. It's pretty cool. All right, so let's just kill a few of these. I am going to need the Aether Crystals. Um, you will never have enough Aether Crystals. If you, if you ever think you have enough Aether Crystals, trust me, you're wrong. Go get more Aether Crystals. All right, and I'm not really interested in killing the rest of that. Um, actually, yes, I am, because the rest of that will give me level 17. 
which will be good. So we'll kill all of this until we get level six, uh, level seventeen, and then we're going to go fight Krieg. Now Krieg's a fun fight for a melee character um, because, ironically, the safest place for you to be when you're fighting Krieg is right in his face. Um, da, 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 and we'll take a little bit more healing. So, yep, the plan for Krieg is this. Shadow Strike. And now we just stand in his face and tank him. And you should be okay. If you need to back off, do. But uh, especially in his second form, if you back off, he'll start shooting projectiles at you. And um, a lot of his damage comes from the projectiles. You will have to deal with the stomp. But uh, I've got 29 potions, and I have been using them fairly liberally. So you guys should have at least a few as well. Alright, here we go. So keep your buffs active. There's the stomp. Use a potion. That stomp, when you're in melee range, is really the only thing you should be worried about. Here comes the stomp. I don't have a potion available. But it doesn't seem to matter. I have enough life steal and regen to just power through it. Wait for the stomp. Use a heal. You get a heal every five seconds, so you should be alright. Stomp, heal. I think that one missed. Okay, here comes the stomp. There's a heal. I think as long as you don't try and take multiple stomps to the face in quick succession without healing, you should be fine. See what I mean? If he doesn't die? Yeah. Okay. So as I was saying, tainted brain matter. Um, I wasn't sure exactly where it came from. Turns out it's in the chest. You will get one of these every single time, um, or at least the first time you kill Warden Krieg, you will get one. That will let you make mistake of not reading all of this before. Um, that will let you make a uh, equilibrium if you didn't get one drop, um, or one of the other relics if you prefer. That is actually a really good pair of gloves. 140 armor. Um, I can't say no to that. The plus two to veil of shadow and plus two to shadow strike is pretty good, um, but that amount of armor is not something you can ignore. We'll put these boots on as well, once we hit level 20. Uh, this ring has a lot of stuff on it. Um, and some of that stuff is actually resistances, which are, would be really nice to have, actually. Uh, can we swap out... You know what? Mystic Gold Band. Goodbye. And you know what? We're going to sell that ring because I forgot I have these necklaces sitting in my inventory. So, White Maya. Let's go turn those in. This ring is a very, very good ring. A lot of my playthroughs, I will end up using this ring that I get from this quest until I get the same ring in Elite, because it has such a large amount of resistances on it. Having said that, um, being melee, there's going to be there's going to be some really nice rings. Um, so that's Veloth's. So the Slith Primal Ring, Poison and Acid Resistance, all Elemental Resistances, and Vitality Resistance. Really, really good ring for Resistances. And uh, we're going to be fighting a lot of Beasts in Act 2, and also in Act 7. So that 10% damage to them is also quite nice. Okay. I'm going to cut this video here, and uh, I'm going to go do some shopping. And I'll show you what I bought when I'm finished. Um, actually, no, I'm not, because I'm broke. <laughs> um, if you didn't spend all your money, if you have some left, um, I definitely recommend, for example, these pants have 32 armor on them. That needs to be more like 132. The chest piece I'm going to replace with the Fortified Dublé, or Doublet, depending on how you want to say it. But um, if you go to your armor rating here, you can see my armor on my legs and my feet is very, very low. Um, I need to fix that, but uh, I don't have the 
money to do it. So regardless, I'm going to cut this here and uh, I will see you in the next video. So thanks very much for watching and bye for now.